Hello everybody and uh, welcome to today's uh, demonstration session. My name is Brian and uh, I'll be walking you through an event right to Salesforce integration. So if you haven't already created your Workato account, uh, please go ahead to www.workato.com and create a demo account there. So using that, you'll be able to you know, follow this uh, integration demonstration. So for today's uh, demonstration, here are some of the apps that we'll be using. Firstly, we'll be using uh, Workato to integrate all our apps and we'll be using Eventbrite to capture user registration data. So whenever a new user registers for an event in Eventbrite, we will get that event in Workato. Uh, in Salesforce will be used to store user data for further analysis and reporting. So in this case, we'll be using Salesforce to store all the customer details uh, all the campaign and uh, campaign registration details within Salesforce. And we'll also be using it to you know, store and calculate this field called the customer lifetime value, which uh, I'll describe later. And finally, we'll be using MailChimp to store user emails in lists. And we'll be using MailChimp to actually send out marketing emails to users that have you know, already signed up for events on Eventbrite. So you can use, up, use, them, for, use them in uh, follow-up marketing campaigns. So the goals for today's uh, integration will be to automate synchronization from Eventbrite to Salesforce whenever a user registers in Eventbrite. And uh, based on that, we will want to you know, be able to show loyalty of the user when they sign up for multiple events and capture the user's lifetime value. So in this case, uh, lifetime value basically refers to you know, how much. So whenever a user signs up for an event in Eventbrite, we will capture like how much money they spend on that event and then we will use that value to actually uh, store into Salesforce as the lifetime value field. So whenever a new, the user signs up for this, another event, we will basically you know, add the new, life, the new amount of, that they've spent on that ticket into the existing lifetime value. And finally, the last goal is to basically allow us to sync attendee information to MailChimp, right? to allow us to you know, send follow-up emails to Users. So whenever we have another event, you know, we can just send emails to the same batch of users that have already signed up for our past events. So uh, before I, you know, go into the integration flow, I'll firstly start with, you know, describing uh, the database models, right? So we need to understand how information is stored across all our different applications. So in this case, uh, in, what I have here is basically a database model diagram. And in this diagram, we have uh, boxes. So each of these boxes uh, represent uh, database tables or objects. And inside each of these objects, you can see attributes. Like for example, an Eventbrite event attendee table or object has two uh, fields, one called event ID and the other one called email. So whenever you sign up for an event Eventbrite, you will create a record in this table and that record will have an event ID and an email. So the way this uh, diagram is set up is we can see all the relationships between all the different objects. So whenever an event attendee is created in Eventbrite, we want to go ahead and create an associated Salesforce campaign and Salesforce contact. So and in, in order to show that that particular contact has visited this campaign, we need to create this relationship called the Salesforce campaign member. So it's, what, what essentially this is is a Another is a custom object that uh, basically stores the relationship between the contact and the campaign. So as you can see here, it contains a foreign key campaign ID, which is related to the Salesforce campaign, and a foreign key contact ID, which is related to the Salesforce contact ID. So uh, finally, uh, in order to you know integrate with Mailchimp, we need to actually, based on the email address stored in the Salesforce contact, we want to be able to you know create a record in the Mailchimp list and store the email address there. So, I mean, if you, if, if you don't really get the, my explanation so far, you can, uh, you know, I'll be, don't worry, I'll be actually providing the links to these diagrams uh, within the video link itself so that you can, you know, explore them on your own time. Okay, moving on, uh, you know, now that we understand how the data is actually stored across all the apps, we can, uh, you know, start to design an integration workflow. So, in this case, uh, let me zoom in a bit. This integration workflow is, uh, you know, if the, the ovals represent start and end points and the squares, like you see here, represent decision points. 
and these uh, rounded rectangles basically uh, represent processes. So the way the integration flow works is that firstly, we start with whenever there's a new Eventbrite registration, we want to capture this as an event. And then based on that, we want to you know, check if the associated Salesforce campaign exists. And if it doesn't exist, then you, you want to go ahead and use the data in the Eventbrite registration to create the campaign. campaign. And once we do that, you know, we can proceed to the next step where we check that the Salesforce contact exists, create the Salesforce contact if it doesn't, and you know, next check that the campaign member relationship exists. And if it doesn't, we you know, just go ahead creating it. So basically this, this, this diagram shows uh, how information uh, passes over from one stage of the integration to another. And uh, yeah, so finally, after going through all the steps of this workflow, we will hit the stop action and we should be done with that particular integration flow. So moving on. So now, uh, you know, now that we understand roughly how what kind of integration we want to do, and how the data is organized, we can start to create our recipe in Workato. So, uh, in Workato, integrations are done using these three main things: recipes, triggers, and actions. So recipes are basically a, a set of steps that Workato will follow to get work done between our apps. So in this case, uh, these each of these rows represents a step. So for example, whenever there's a new event, new event attendee registered event, right? We want to proceed to the next step, which is to search for campaigns in Salesforce. So basically everything pro proceeds in a linear fashion. So that's what uh, the recipe actually means. And uh, for tr as for triggers, triggers represent, uh, you know, events which the recipe will be listening out for. So for example, I have a trigger here for new updated event attendee registered in Eventbrite. So what this means is that whenever there's a new event attendee registered in Eventbrite, we want Workato to listen for this event and get triggered on it. And then based on this, we will create a job that will be processed. So based on data, data stored in, in the job, we will actually proceed to process the following actions. So that's what a uh, trigger actually means. Uh, actions, on the other hand, are uh, pretty straightforward. They are just basically uh, steps. So generally what actions do is they allow us to do create, read, or update, or delete uh, uh, procedures on our uh, external application. So in this case, for example, we are searching for campaigns in Salesforce. This is considered an, as an action that is uh, actually going out and retrieving, uh, reading Salesforce and retrieving information about campaigns. Yeah, so... Uh, as you can see here, you know, everything is, uh, Workato makes it quite easy to develop your integration uh, workflow. As you can see, everything is, is, can, is displayed in a graphical user interface and you can basically, you know, drag and drop uh, data pills. So I'll now, you know, explain what, how, how to actually go about building this. So every, every recipe will start first with a trigger. So based on the information in the trigger, you can actually go ahead and, you know, click add a new step and click and create an action. So this action will actually allow you to, you know, select an app. So in this case, it'll be like Salesforce, for example, Salesforce. And you can select a particular action. So if let's say I wanted to do a search, I can do a search objects campaign, for example. So I don't want to mess up my recipe. So I'll just go ahead and delete this step. Uh, so what I'll do here is what so what you can do is after creating the action you can actually map various data pills into uh, fields within that action and to to actually send information into into the third party uh, API. So in this case when I want to search for campaigns in Salesforce I'm essentially searching for campaigns in Salesforce using the Salesforce uh, using the Eventbrite event ID as like here. So if I click on this I will realize that. On the right hand side in this thing that in this box that we call the data tree we see all the data pills here and so for the trigger from eventbrite we have this data pill called event id we can just basically drag and drop this over right like this like so so what this allows us to do is so whenever when we start the recipe and whenever there's a new trigger event we will actually go ahead and search for campaigns in salesforce based on the eventbrite id right and so uh I won't, I won't go into detail about how the following steps uh, work, but essentially what we are trying to do here is we are trying to replicate this integration workflow in Workato. So as you can see here for campaigns, right, we are checking first is if the associated SFDC campaign exists. So that's why I'm doing the search for campaigns. And if the campaign, if there's no existing campaign, we want to go ahead and create a campaign. 
and if there is a uh, more than one existing campaign this is an error condition we want to you know stop the job and with an error so we can notify the administrator that hey there shouldn't be more than one campaign why is there more than one campaign and we can go ahead and fix the data and rerun this uh, job okay so i think uh, that's enough explanation into like how the uh, you know how the recipe is like i'm you know, not going to describe uh, i'm going to show you a demonstration of like what is going to what how this recipe would, would work with uh, actual information actual data from uh, eventbrite and salesforce So I'm going to firstly, let's, uh, I'm, I'm now in Eventbrite and in Eventbrite, I realized that uh, I'm going to search for all my events. So I have this brand new test event, which is an event which uh, has not yet been created in Salesforce. So as you can see in my Salesforce campaigns, I don't see a brand new test event. Even if I refresh this page, you know, I'm not going to see it. So if I refresh the page, uh, I don't even see inside here. So it's totally, uh, it's a brand new test event in Eventbrite. It hasn't even been created as a campaign in, in Salesforce. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, add a new registration to this. So hit the preview button and let's click register. And so I'm going to register for a free ticket. Let's check out the ticket. And first name would be Rotato Testing 123556. Test and testing, for example, and just giving uh, information. So here now we can complete the registration. So we've uh, created a successfully created an event in Eventbrite. You realize here that the campaign has not yet been added. Neither has the contact yet been added into Salesforce. Uh, that's because we haven't started the recipe. So now I'm going to go ahead and click start. And what this is going to do is, you know, it's going to go, Vocato is going to go out there and go and retrieve information from Eventbrite. So we found four jobs. So let's uh, wait for the jobs to populate. So I actually ran, I actually created a couple of uh, registrations to this uh, brand new test event earlier, but I haven't started the job. So that's why we have uh, four jobs popping up. So let me refresh the page. Make sure that everything is popped up. Okay, great. So here we can see that we have, you know, Workato has picked up a new event from Eventbrite, a new brand new test event. First name equals Workato testing one two three five six, which is exactly what we used here, and last name is Workato test. So if we, the good thing about Workato is that, uh, you know, when we execute a job, we have this job, it's log that we actually can go in and, you know inspect all the various steps that happen in the job. So here we can see like, for example, in this new trigger event, these are the information that we actually captured from uh, Eventbrite. And then when we did the search, you know, this is the output. So we realized that there's one event that exists. So finally now, what would the user see, right? Uh, so if I go back into Salesforce and I refresh the page, I'll see that I have this new campaign called a brand new test event. And if I refresh the if I click on the campaign itself, I can see that I have all these uh, various campaign members. So in here I have Workato testing one, two, three, four, five, six, which is the contact that I just created based on the event by registration. So if I go to contacts, you can see that it's here as well. So everything is kind of populated. And so as I mentioned in uh, one another after, I mean, you know, we also had another goal in which we wanted to populate this contact into MailChimp. So if we go into MailChimp, you can see here in the demo list that I have a new subscriber. Page, uh, testing one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, testing one, three, five, six, seven, eight, which is this one, which was just created earlier, about a few minutes ago. So if you wanna, you know, you, if you want to check through what actually happened, you can actually go through the job logs and you can see that, you know, hey, here, we added the subscriber into MailChimp as subscribe. And this is the email address and the output shows us information about the object. So, um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's it for my uh, demonstration. Uh, you know, I hope you, you know, have a rough understanding of how Workato recipes work and how this use case can be done. 
uh, for your reference, I'll be you know adding all the various uh, assets of this uh, demo into the video link itself. So I'll be providing the Wakato demo recipe as well as the integration workflow. So using these pieces of uh, information, you can actually go ahead and you know create your integration on your own. And however, if you you need any help, just uh, you know feel free to reach out to uh, me. Brian or uh, any of our customer support stuff uh, and, and I'm sure they'll be happy to help you with that. Uh, with that, uh, you know, I hope you have a great day and uh, thank you for your patience. Bye.